Hello, fellow preppers, tis I, the rumpled one. You're probably wondering, what's he doing wearing his urban survival gear when he's out in a rural location? Oh, I just thought it might be fun because the subject is uh, kind of a book review or a couple books. Thinking about survival. Written by uh, Bruce Clayton. If you're a survivalist from the 70s, that name probably rings a bell. But if you're a modern-day prepper here in the 21st century, probably haven't heard of them. Let's see. This book was written 1984. I'll just read to you from the beginning. Here. What is a survivalist? I am a survivalist and proud of it. I am a person who has taken steps to make my family self-sufficient in the event of a widespread emergency. I have a year's supply of food, water, and medicine carefully stored away. I have a house which can be kept warm even in the depth of winter by solar and wood energy sources. I have learned to hunt, fish, garden, and collect natural foods. I can perform advanced first aid when necessary. I recently gave up a high paying job in Los Angeles so I could move my family to a rural environment. Lastly, I have acquired the means and skills to provide my family with physical protection should it be required. These are the characteristics which makes me a survivalist. The survivalists I know are extremely diverse in their characteristics. They are not easily lumped into any particular political camp and their religious, moral, and education backgrounds span the range of our society. Some survivalists are millionaires while some are from the low income level. Some are Democrats, some Republicans, and quite a number are so disgusted with the political process that they don't belong to any party at all. A few survivalists, I admit, are stark raving crazy. <laughs> But most are respectable, solid citizens who have one and only one thing in common. They own a year's supply of food, just in case. So, like I mentioned before, I've been a survivalist, I guess since the uh, mid-80s. When my friend Ralph exposed me to the concept sounded good to me. I guess um, one of the things is that, you know, we have those shows on TV now that doomsday preppers and try and make everybody, you know, who wants to prepare or survive look crazy. But that's not what it's about. I mean, I think this, this little chapter that I read really sums it up. Maybe you don't, but I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's being prepared for just about anything. You know, I'm a person who has taken steps to make my family self-sufficient in the event of a widespread emergency. When you look at the hurricanes and floods and outages, and fires, that have swept this country in the past year or so. We don't even have to go back as far as Katrina, but just look, you know, this year and last year. Most people still haven't learned the lesson. They're waiting on FEMA or whoever to rescue them. It makes no sense. They live in harm's way, but they don't take preparation or make preparation to take care of themselves in the event of a, an emergency. That's not smart thinking. Uh, you have to wonder what their mindset is. Oh, the government will take care of us. Oh, it couldn't happen to me. Oh, well, if it happens, I don't want to survive anyway. What are they thinking? Are they thinking? Right out here, you see all the wood I've been cutting. If we have a really bad winter, 
I'm going to stay warm. You know, I show you from time to time, you know, my food preps, what I, you know, putting in my pantry, you know, 25 pound sacks of rice and beans. In fact, I got a couple of big pots of beans cooking now. I don't understand. I don't understand some people and their thought processes. You know, thinking about survival. I mean, chances are, if you're watching this video, you know, I'm, I'm, you're already on board. Maybe a few of you aren't. Maybe you're thinking about it, ready to take the step. It's not difficult. It's just things that you normally do, you just take the plans. And some people think it's crazy. They go, well, what if it never happens and you got all that food? Well, that's like saying, well, what if you never get a flat tire? You got a, you got a, you got a spare. You got a jack. What if it never happens? I mean, life insurance, health insurance, car insurance. Yeah, some of them are mandatory. But even if they weren't, you probably would want it in some way, shape, or form. I mean, with my trucks, you know, they're old. You know, 1999s. You know, only paid two, four grand for them. If something happens, they get smashed up. I've got liability, so but I can fix them. And that's a whole different topic. Something I might touch on soon. But back to the point, thinking about survival. It is something to more than think about. You have to take action. You know, I, I posed that question the other day about you know, what should my friend do that lives in the earthquake and made me think I hit my shells and I got another book, Urban Alert. Emergency Survival for City Dwellers. Uh, this is by Mary Ellen Clayton and Bruce Clayton again. And I bought all these books pretty much about the same time. This was written in 82. Now, they talk about pretty much the things that we all know as survivalists and preppers. They even have a three-day test in here where you, you know, you turn off everything and see if you can make it for three days. You know, they have a checklist for the home and a checklist for car evacuation. Maybe I should let my friend know about that. But I don't know if these books are still in print or not, but you might want to check them out. So, like I said, chances are, fellow preppers, you're preparing, because you know if you fail to prepare today, you're preparing to fail tomorrow. <laughs>